The idea first came out when I, I've never had physical copies before and I've always wanted to explore that. My life has been doing more digital stuff. So um, now I wanted to check if my fans were up to it, whether they wanted to get physical copies for the first time. And I decided to develop that idea for them, whether they would like to contribute and be a part of the next record, in fact. My new album is edgier sounding. It's definitely more rock uh, than it used to be. And uh, it's very, very different. Uh, and the songs this time, I think, is a little bit more mature in songwriting, I would say. Because I've um, definitely got a better grasp on what I wanted to say and where I wanted to go as a musician. So I'm, I'm very excited and very proud of the material. Boys. <laughs> I think this this album was uh, was kind of uh, started out with me uh, just getting my heart broken. And I've always been more of a cathartic songwriter, so I only write when I'm hurting or I feel something, like something compels me. That's when it all just bleeds out really easily and um, this is pretty much an album, me pouring my heart out. You can expect this next year, January 2013. Uh, this album has been in the makings for quite a while. Uh, part of it was raising the money for recording again as well as um, most of it was the songwriting started about the oldest song in this album is only about a year old so it's been in the making for about a year now um, My music career started out probably I would say when I was 14 Yeah, yeah that was like about 10 years ago Yeah, and it's um I, I started going to gigs when I was 14 like going to local music gigs and just loved the feeling of live music and just, it just kept going on and by the time you're 16 and you watch bands for two years of your life you kind of want to be one so I started my own band then I went online to soft.com.sg and looked for a band I just met strangers I never knew on the internet and just started jamming and we had fun and then from one band it moved on to another band called Alera and then from Alera I decided to do my own solo stuff and so I've always been more of a rock music kind of a girl departed to my solo stuff, it was really different. And now it's kind of like coming back into the roots of rock music. Um, I think I needed a change of scenery. Um, I love Singapore with all my heart, but I feel as an artist, I, I need to grow. And um, there's, only, there's only so much you can do locally here. At some point I, feel, I felt like I, I wasn't learning enough. And I felt going overseas would help me try to understand uh, the, the music industry in the global market. So it was just, I was just been so lucky to be able to present, opportunities opportunity presented itself and one thing led to another and then I've decided, I was, it came to the decision where I've got to move there physically and I was like, okay, I'll do it. It's been amazing. Things happen pretty much faster than I expect them to. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's owed to a lot of hard work from the people that I work with as well as it's been nothing but just a lot of hoping and then trying to put your best foot forward so it's just been quite stressful. <laughs> oh, family, family, friends, uh, I miss the food here, of course I miss the food. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely do miss the comfort because I am comfortable here I would say. I don't know. I have the tendency to like weird guys, but <laughs> no, no, he doesn't need to be a musician. As long as you got your quirks and you're someone that is, uh, you can make me laugh and you're serious about what you love. Like if you're passionate about, you have a passion. I'm, I'm probably really into you if I see you passionate about something. You know, when you meet a guy and, and they talk about something they really are, they love doing, and their eyes just light up and. You know, it's it's so rare to find guys like that, actually. I, a long time ago on YouTube, I did a cover of a David Choi song. 
and apparently it, it stayed into his manager as well as David's memory. Like they really liked that cover that I did. Um, when he came to Singapore, he wanted someone to open, and they naturally thought of me because they knew I was in Singapore, and that's how I got to meet them. And it, it's it's so amazing for me because I am such a fan of David. And not just a fan, but as a musician to another musician, I have so much respect for him as a songwriter. So to be able to sit down with him and, and actually have a conversation about music, or or just know that you know we, we were friends, it's just been like mind blowing for me. She is just one brilliant, amazing power woman. You know, it, it's the things that she do, she works so hard and um, she she really cares about people. She really does. And you could tell from just her, her normal daily interactions with people in the office. And it, it's, it, I think it's so rare to see someone who's like such a supernova of a star, because she is so down to earth. And she's so, she really cares about people. And you could tell that from her work and, and who she is as a person in daily life. Light and love. Many more artists is a good thing. It's a good, good, good thing. Um, I always felt that the music industry was progressing. It's because we're Singapore, and we expect everything to be like you know instant. So um, it, these things take time. And considering that we're a small country, and the fact that it's only been ten years since like uh, about ten years ago, if you look, like yeah, we've done so much. We've come so far in music already. With lots of musicians, uh, compared to last year, we have more gigs each month than ever, more than ever and I think in history. The audience is growing, slow, very steady I would, at this point so far um, and uh, I can only hope for, for more people to get into it, you know, and for artists to not give up, for more than to keep trying and hopefully more veteran people to come back because I feel um, it, it, it's, it's an, an, an effort from everyone, from the audience making out to shows, for artists to keep pulling up good material, as well as old veterans who have left the music industry and you know, they continue with their other, their, their other part of their lives, like having a family or whatever, but for them to come back and give mm -hmm. the wisdom that they had in the past and a lot of the experiences that they have that could really help a lot of the current musicians and as well as educate a lot of the younger people to about the, how, well, the history of local music and where it came from. All of that is so important on building an identity as a Singaporean, building identity into the culture. So um, yeah, I think a lot of it, it's a job for everyone to take part. On. I would say that you have to be very wise with your decisions. Um, it's when you're at the start, always be hungry and always be and always challenge yourself. And the part that no one really talks about is when things start to happen for you, you got to learn how to say no. That's very important because you got to start get picking wiser choices and and, and start taking things into things in your stride, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you are usually you're gonna be. I'm not gonna talk about all the awesome things and reach for gold because I think that's the basic. But yeah, the hard part is knowing when you have to pick lesser evils knowing when you have to, to sometimes break someone's heart along the way. Um, but you know, you've got to be dedicated to either your craft, dedicated to hu you as a human. No, I don't think there's a special name to it. Um, it was actually my mom and my kindergarten friend that I think talk about it. And it was uh, Yun Jen, which actually me, uh, which is my Mandarin name. And I think if you say it really fast, you get an inch. I think. <laughs> <laughs>